Welcome back traders. Let's have a look at this uh, British pound New Zealand dollar trade that we were looking at. If you remember we had the triangle coming across um, where we saw we had the, the lower highs coming down, we had the higher lows coming up and we saw that the market was getting a bit squeezed. Now we've had quite a big movement uh, starting off here at this nearly nice pin bar breaking through and then across this level that we said would be a support or resistance level that needed to be broken and now it looks like it is coming through so now there's a couple things that we need to look at first of all some of you may have entered the trade already uh, off of this pin bar here it I think it would have been a little bit too early because it didn't really hit this line but it is working out so if you did well done on that and now it looked like we're getting another pin bar Obviously, we'd have to wait until tomorrow because this is a daily chart to confirm whether or not this is a pin bar. It does look like it's coming pretty close off this line here, but it's not a change in direction. So we would need some kind of other confirmation to check. But what we're going to do in this video is go through how to enter off a pin bar. What I've done here, and please excuse my artistic abilities, uh, what I've done here is I've just drawn up a short pin bar and we're going to talk about the different entries and we're going to compare it to what we're looking at right now as though this ended off in a perfect pin bar and we were actually going to enter the trade. Now, with the pin bar, we are saying that this is a signal that the market is going to go short. It's going to keep coming down. I know that if you follow the Steve Neeson idea of how pin bars work, that this could signal that it's going to go up. But over the last couple of years, price action traders are moving away from that. And we only see this as a bearish pin bar saying that the market is going to come down. So that's how we're going to be treating this as the way that current price action traders are really doing it. Now, if you were to place a trade off this pin bar, you are basically saying that according to this, this is my trigger, it's time to enter a trade. So with this being your trigger, there needs to be a point where we say, well, it's not working, it's, it's wrong. And luckily with pin bars, it's quite easy. We are saying that this is going to be coming down, right? Now, if this line here is broken, if this price level breaks, so say the market comes up and goes above the, the tail of the pin bar, then the pin bar is no longer valid. It's no longer in effect. It hasn't moved the market enough, so it's wrong. So this is where we would put our stop loss. We'd put it just a few pips above the tail because, you know, rarely things are perfect. So if you add five pips or somewhere around there, depending on your, your time frame, then that's not a bad idea. And so if the market comes up and crosses and ignores this pin bar, then we know we're done, we're out. Let's not hold a losing trade. Let's rather get out early and look for the next opportunity to trade. But also sometimes the pin bar just doesn't work at all. So let's say that the market came and it closed here and then it just starts going up. Um, this is clearly that the pin bar hasn't triggered at all. So what we actually do is we go ahead and we set up pending orders on a trade like this. So we have two options here. We can set a pending order just below the nose over here. So if the market comes and moves in this area, it doesn't trigger the trade. It's only when the market comes and crosses this line will we enter that sell position. Now this gives us a nice opportunity because it's, it adds a little bit more to the trade. We're kind of waiting a little bit longer. We're confirming that the market is going to start heading down and we get in. The only drawback is that if we are entering all the way down here and our stop loss is all the way up here, then that's quite a big distance. So yes, it is a less risky trade, but you also make a little bit less money from it. The other option is to wait for the market to hit about half the distance of the pin bar. So you can measure it out and set a stop loss here. Uh, sorry, you can set a pending order here in the sell position. So we are saying that when the market comes up and hits this, we're going to go ahead and sell. The reason why we do this is so often we see in pin bars, and in fact, you can see it in this case here, that the market first comes back up. It rallies a bit before coming down. So now the market will come, it'll trade. It'll hit here, we enter a sell position, and as it comes down, now we start to hit profits and we are all the way down. The reason why we do this is that our stop loss would still be at the same place, which means we are risking much less money and we can make more money on the way down. The drawback is that it is less likely to trigger your sell. Because if the market does just 
start coming straight down and it never crosses this point then you're not in the trade so one way to get around this is to enter two pending orders but obviously halve the amount of money that you're putting into the markets on each of these trades so you're not risking twice as much you're just entering two separate trades so now both of these will be sell orders in this case the bottom one will be a sell stop and this one will be a sell limit and now a couple things can happen first let's look at the worst case scenario and get that out the way worst case the market comes down it triggers your sell stop it comes up triggers your sell limit and keeps going up and then hits your stop loss so that way you'd be out of the market completely but your stop loss is still quite tight so it's not that bad now let's look at best case scenario best case scenario the market comes up it hits your stop it hits your sell limit and then it comes down and hits your sell stop and now you're in the market fully invested in a winning trade on both of these uh, the nice thing about this is that because this one is a lot shorter it means that you're holding less risk but now you're fully invested and you've made all of this distance here from this point to that point this is all extra profit that you would not have got before and on a daily chart that can be quite a significant amount of pips so it's a lot of extra money in your bank account i hope this is making sense so far so that was worst and then best case scenario then you get the ones in the middle where let's say the market just totally ignores this pin bar and just goes all the way up now at this point here you enter your sell but now it crosses your stop loss up there and so you lose half of your position then the other situation is when the pin bar reacts perfectly and the market just goes down now you go ahead and you enter here in your sell and you start making profit but you miss out on the potential sell entry that you had set up here so now you're only making half the amount now when you start weighing up the pros and cons of these different approaches you'll see that the greatest potential is by having one at the half here and one at the bottom now there are no guarantees in forex so we have to sort of stack things in our favor we have to think carefully and place the best possible trades that we can to really maximize the amount of profit that we can make when trades go well when trades go poorly you want to be out you want to place that trade you see that your system is wrong you want to hop out and wait for the next entry and really maximize the profit and that's where this sort of strategy works for you now if you're looking at money management there are ways where you can go ahead and measure the distance from your entry point to your stop loss and calculate exactly how much you are willing to lose in dollars or rands or whatever your base account may be if you want to learn more about that go ahead and sign up for our online course it's hundred percent free no strings attached anything like that and we actually have a whole section where we discover this where we discuss this in more detail and go into money management on how to figure out how much money you're willing to put on there and also how much money you can make per pip with these two different scenarios that can happen